Okay, now we're going to start at the top where we have, big surprise, Kyle Larson. Now, look, I know they didn't put this into it because Larson's been the favorite every week. But, I mean, I just, I, I don't, if, if you're going to, and, and look, you look at Kyle Larson and you know why he's the favorite every week. I think we've gone over this. But you can specifically see why this week, because he won both at Las Vegas and Kansas. All right, so you got that going for you. But I'm like, all right, so if you're four to one, what are you telling me? You telling me you're two to one if he's not racing at the Indianapolis 500 earlier that day, which is not even going to happen. So you've taken no account, as far as I can tell, that he is racing in a completely different series on the same day in a different state. You've taken none of that into account. He's still four to one. I'm sorry, but that's nuts. That's just, I can't do it. So if you want to do it, fine. But I just think at four to one, you, we're just, they're telling us to uh, bet somebody else. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, he won the poll and, and won the race in uh, 2021, led 327 of 400 laps. So a <laughs> yeah. dominant performance there. Uh, led 51 laps and finished ninth in 22. Um, last year, led one lap, ended up crashing out. But like you said, none, none of those times was he racing 500 miles in an Indy car, you know, a quarter of the way across the country a couple of hours beforehand. Um, he got practice with it this weekend because he made the top six in qualifying for Indy 500. So he had to stick around and then kind of rushed down to um, North Wilkesboro to get there for the All-Star race, another track that he dominated at last season uh, to win. Um, so yeah, I, I could he win either race? Absolutely, yeah. And, and he's a great driver and he's probably the best guy that's ever done the double or, or best chance to, to do the double and actually win one of the races, if not both of them. Uh, but like you said, doing both on one day uh, this being the second one, yeah, he's going to be a good. He's going to have a good car. Yeah, he's going to be fast. But um, right now, early without seeing practice and knowing what he's got to go through on actual Sunday, four to one's a, a bit expensive for me. Yeah, and uh, well, you mentioned that race that he dominated, and and a handful of these drivers will have this kind of race as mm -hmm. we'll go through. But the thing that's interesting is, let's keep this in mind. 14 races at Charlotte, two top fives. That dominating win, which, as you said, was in a few years ago, 2021, that's it. So, that's the, yeah, like. that's it. So, uh, it's just too much. Just because he won Las Vegas and Kansas and he's Kyle Larson, it's just too much. So, um, I can pick a, five or six other races, or maybe even ten other races, where Kyle Larson will be 4-1 to one this year that I, I, I feel a lot more confident in uh, going with him because in the next gen I mean the only thing to, to keep an eye on is that he did start 12th and 36th in the next two next gen races the one he crashed last year the ninth in 22 so if he has a good qualifying run keep that in mind but if he doesn't then even more reason I think to just back off okay um, then he had one 6-1 to one. and just like Larson uh, Hamlin uh, wrecked his car last year, but he started fourth and led 20 laps, so he was a little bit better off than uh, Larson, and a lot better off because he won, as we mentioned, the race in 2022. So already, uh, it looks like Denny Hamlin, just in the last couple of years with the next-gen car, has been better. Throw in the fact that he does have 11 top fives out of 32 races, so that is still uh, mathematically better than Kyle Larson. Um, the only thing, though, and this is another thing that we're going to find out here, is that I think this is a race where I am I feel pretty good about wagering on because I think these these first few favorites are vulnerable. We just talked about Larson. Hamlin's vulnerable because let's keep in mind in a long race at the six hundred, he only led fifteen laps when he won, even though and, and he was from the pole. So that's and and by the way, he's only led thirty eight laps in his last five trips to Charlotte Motor Speedway. And that uh, is quite a bit uh, under what we expect for Denny Hamlin. So uh, if we were going to take him as a heavy favorite. So, yeah, I, I think uh, he's also vulnerable. Oddly enough, the race that he 
one from pole where he only led 15 laps. That was actually not a 400 lap race. That was 413 laps. It was the longest one because of all the overtimes and he still only led 15 laps. So like you said, um, that is something to be concerned about with Denny Hamlin, though I do really like what I saw from him on the all-star race or at the all-star race. We know he's been really good at um, the short tracks and this could could not be a more different track than the North Wilkesboro. But for all intents and purposes, Denny Hamlin and team have got a lot of stuff going their way right now. Um, I think if he qualifies well, that six to one is going to come down for sure. So Hamlin, I would say if you're going to take one of the favorites, I would take him now before he qualifies and practices inside the top five like he tends to. And then those uh, those odds get more expensive for you. OK, uh, next up is Reddick at eight to one. He's starting to get a fixture there uh, inside the single digits. At least he's not six to one or even seven to one. So I like it better at eight to one because um uh, He's actually the one that I, I, I would be looking at with these top three. Now, Larson and Hammond are, are definitely better at this point in their careers. But Reddick, what I like about it is uh, you get the odds at 8-1. to one, uh, Fifth and sixth with the next gen, leading at least 19 laps in both races. And he was second at Vegas and fourth at Texas. He also has a win in the Xfinity Series at this track back in 2019. So... Uh, once again, I'd like to see Reddick with a little bit better odds, but um, he's eight to one, and it is better than Hamlin and Larson. So, uh, I, I, if he qualifies like in the top five or something like that, since he's never qualified higher than eighth with the next gen, uh, I'd like him even more. But then his odds would drop. So, I think I'd be willing to take a chance on him at eight to one today. Yeah, I would as well. And he's led more laps more recently in five starts than we talked about with Denny Hamlin too. So. Uh, a very good record here at this track. Out of his five starts, four of the finishes have been top tens. His worst finish was a 14th, and that was back in 2020. Uh, he has not started lower than 15th, despite the fact that uh, he hasn't started higher than eighth with the next gen car uh, at this track. So a lot of good things going for Reddick. I think the uh, eight to one tag on him is, is pretty appropriate right now, and I wouldn't hesitate picking, up, picking him up right now either. Uh, and then we have uh, Blaney and Byron at 10 to 1. And uh, Blaney, uh, I picked him last year. And, um, I, you know, I, I like the way that he got off to a good start last year. And, uh, you know, I, I had good reasons to take him. I, I didn't have him, like, as a heavy favorite to take him. But I liked him overall. I liked the odds. I thought I was getting a decent bargain there. And he really uh, was the best driver last year. He had a great run. He led 163 laps, which was, uh, you know, he had only led 171 in his career out of 13 races or 12 before that, and only two top fives before that. And he had crashed the year before. Uh, but uh, Blaney also has a win uh, in the Xfinity Series. And like I said, I think his odds were nice. So uh, I think this year you're... you're to me, it's it's kind of, I think you're still in a good situation because you're getting 10 to 1, so it's a fair number. Uh, again, if the driver that is probably at this point in his first, de you know, as defending champ uh, you, uh, of the series, you know he's probably chomping at the bit to go out there and get a win. So I, I think uh, he would be real interesting at 10 to 1. Uh, I will say this, I would take him over Byron at 10 to 1. And that's even though Byron was second last year to uh, Blaney, led 91 laps from the pole. But the fact is, is that, um, you know, Byron has just been he's pretty similar to Blaney overall here with only a couple of top fives out of seven races. Didn't really do much before last year. So, again, very similar. Matter of fact, it's strange because Byron has three poles um, and has started in the top five in five of the seven career races. So... I think because of that, if you like him, you better take him now because he seems to obviously qualify well here, which means his odds would go down. Unfortunately, he hasn't taken advantage of all that really good starting position. Yeah, William Byron in particular, uh, I would absolutely go for now. What I really like about him this weekend is how he's qualified uh, at the track. So like you said, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, top five starts, uh, six from a top 10, and then when his very first start at the track in the series was 21st. He's also been leading more laps than Ryan Blaney. I think Blaney only led like eight laps at Charlotte 
in all of his starts up until last year when he just made the breakout case and, and led 163 and went on to win. So I think if you if if Byron and team can get over the struggles that they had at the um, you know he hit the wall in the All Star race, bent his toe length, you know Denny Hamlin, Joe Gibbs racing seemed to have caught them. Byron and Hendrick were certainly the earlier dominate, dominators in in the schedule, uh, but they they've lost a little bit of that yet that edge. Um, but if you think that William Byron can hasn't lost anything, I guess really, or it's inconclusive at this point, like you said, you want to take him now. Uh, because he's going to qualify really well and that he's just needs to convert those single lap runs into a full race which is significantly uh, easier said than done given the fact that it's a 600 mile race uh, but yeah looking at ryan blaney i would say if anybody's been on the fence and questioning potentially taking ryan blaney because he hasn't exactly been you know he hasn't come come out swinging he, he's not been uh, you know as up there as a byron or a hamlin yet so far this year but we have seen Ford make some ground and Ford, I think, has found what they need in terms of their setup to be able to get this car to work properly. Uh, Joey Logano dominated last week in the All-Star race. Again, completely different track, but the, the Fords are, are there again. And I think some of that's going to rub off uh, some of Logano's success is going to rub off on Blaney this week. It's a place that Blaney has a lot of uh, confidence and should have a lot of confidence having done so well last year. So I think if you're going to take anybody um, or if you're going to take Blaney, uh, this would be the week to do it without question. And then those of you who think that William Byron and Hendrick still have the edge, definitely take him now versus waiting to see where he qualifies. Yeah, see, the big difference from last year to this year was, again, you had Byron, uh, who was off to a good start last year, just like this year, and he was one of the favorites. He was 5-1. to one. Blaney was 22 to one last year. So he was a really good long shot. Now, if Blaney was 15 to one or 10 to one last year, it wouldn't have made any sense because he didn't really have any good history there. So I probably don't take him. Nobody probably takes him. But that was the bargain that you were getting, which is why I liked him. This year, you've got the dominating race to go with, but you're now having to deal with 10 to one. So huge difference. Than investing 22 to 1 odds and 10 to 1 odds. Still pretty good considering where he is now, what he did later last year, but um, it's still 10 to 1. Okay, next up you have Truex and Elliott at 11 to 1. And uh, here's another reason why I think, hey, it's, you know, you got the, the top three drivers in the, in the point series, Larson, Truex, and Hamlin, that I'm willing to pass on this week based on, well, Larson and Hamlin for odds, Truex. The only thing with Truex is that I like are the odds. Because if you look at it, he's got the three wins. He's led over a 1,000 laps. Um, he dominated another one of these drivers that dominated here when he won from the pole in 2016, leading 392 of 400, speaking of domination. But it's also the last time Truex has started in the top five at this racetrack. So... That's why, you know, if I'm betting him, it's almost it's almost like, well, do I bet him with the 11 to 1 and and gamble that maybe he will finally get a good qualifying effort or maybe I don't care about it as long as he qualifies in the top 15, what do I care? But the thing that does uh does uh, put a little bit of a a, a caution into taking Truex is the fact that even though he's led over 1000 laps, he hasn't led a lap in his last four races. And that's not good. Even though he was third last year. Um, Elliot, on the other hand, I would take because Elliot, um, if you look at it, he led 86 laps in 2022 with the next gen. Uh, he led just 28 laps when he won the race. Um, I forget when he won that race, but when he won the, when was that? 2020. 2020. And he started 19th. So he was one of those that, that didn't even have to qualify um, up front. But this is why I like him. He's led at least six laps in his last six. Eh, that's really not much. But he's led at least 22 laps in five of his last six. That's a little bit more impressive. And even before the next gen, his previous six results were second, first, second, fourth, 11th, and second. So this has been a good track. Matter of fact, he won Texas and finished third at Kansas. That's a lot of good stuff for me to say yes at 11-1. Chase Elliott might actually be my top pick at this point. 
Yeah, Chase Elliott's looking really good at that price. I mean, four finishes at Charlotte of second or better, just the one win. Uh, but like you said, consistently leading laps, 330 laps, 38 laps led across 12 career starts. His average start has been 10.9. And to your point earlier, cr contrast that with Martin Truex Jr. Truex's start spot at this track has just not been good. It's His average is 16.1 uh, over 32 starts, and he has, he has one top 10 start. Uh, from the last four um, races here at Charlotte. Zero laps led in that time. That said, um, go for Elliott now. Yeah, totally agree with that. With Truex, though, I wouldn't shy away from taking him, but I would love to see him qualify. I would be a heck of a lot more confident, put it this way, if he qualified inside the top 10. If Truex goes out there, um, demonstrates speed and practice, qualifies well, it's a whole new ball game for him. I wouldn't put it past him coming out and dominating again that 392 lap uh, affair that he led one from pole. He also led 233 laps in a race back in 2017. Uh, so he's no stranger to being out front here. And if he nails that speed earlier, like we talked about when we were talking about the track trends, uh, Truex is one definitely that I would look out for. But um, go with Elliott now. Wait to see where where Truex qualifies um, heading into Sunday. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that, that's – there's no question when you're talking about the difference between those two 11-1 shots. Um, Elliott uh, looks like, uh, I, you know, he's got the advantage. But Truex, I will say this, even though he he's one of these uh, drivers that has dominated this race track before, I think those days are kind of over is the whole idea of the next gen. So it's that, true. Doesn't mean that you can't do what Blaney did. Because even though Blaney led 100 and whatever he led last year, 160 something, the fact is, is that it felt like he dominated. It felt <laughs> like he had led over 300 laps. So uh, that's all you got to do nowadays with the next gen. Okay. Kislowski's 12 to 1. Bell is 13 to 1. And now that Kislowski's got his win, the question is can he get another one right away? Uh, I doubt that. That's asking too much. Uh, he's got a couple of wins here. Matter of fact, he's got four Xfinity Series wins at this racetrack. He was second at Texas, um, he, but the last uh, two years with the next gen, not good. Uh, no laps led, just nothing. Uh, doesn't look good. So, yeah. And he's only led 27 laps in his last five races there. So, um, at 12 to 1, the only reason you're getting 12 to 1 now is because he just won. If he didn't just win, he'd be at 18 to 1, which is where he has been. Uh, 20 to 1 before that so that uh, completely different track forget it uh you're you're not getting any 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 favors there by taking Kislowski. bell at 13 to 1 though i also like as one of my better picks now i like the fact that he led 48 laps last year even though we didn't finish uh, uh the result wasn't all that great but he did finish fifth in 2022 so overall with the next gen he's been solid uh, he uh, has also been solid in a couple of races uh, in Xfinity Series. So he hasn't had a win here, but I like the odds. And I also just, I mean, look, Chris, Christopher Bell was uh, my preseason pick to win it. And uh, I, I haven't changed my mind. I still think it's all about, as we know, not how you start, but how you finish. And he's already got a win, so it's not like he's having a bad start, but... You know, we probably expected a little bit more consistency from him at this point. He hasn't delivered, but I don't know. I just get a good feeling that maybe he'll be able to deliver and be a little bit better. I also like the thirteen to one. I know there's not like a, a you know a major trend I can I can throw out there, but there's just a lot of little things that uh, I don't know. It's just a gut feeling that I think he'll have a good day. Yeah, the only thing that concerns me about Bell, there's no question that he could come out and have a really good day, um, be one of the fastest without question. Uh, like you said, though, his consistency over the past couple of races, even the last five races, he had two finishes outside of the top 30. His last two races, if you include the All-Star race, were both outside of the top 10. So just one uh, sixth place finish. It was at Kansas, which is another 1.5 mile oval. So that's a, a good thing for him. That consistency is just the only reason I, I might be a little bit hesitant on pressing the gas on, on Christopher Bell. Kozlowski, on the other hand, I think he's got more momentum behind him uh, with the win. I think he and Chris Buescher, probably actually I'd take Chris Bush because we haven't talked about him yet over Kozlowski, but I like the way both of those guys are running so far this 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 year uh, and, and right now, in fact. Um, so I just talked myself out of Kozlowski 
and I'll wait since we haven't talked about Busher to put Busher in his place. Yes, because if you look at Busher, who is next up with fourteen to one in Gibbs, uh, Busher, uh, it's almost it's almost about fifty percent with finishing in the top ten in eleven races. His best race was actually last year when he finished eighth, leading just twelve laps. But let's remember, it was not long ago when he just nearly won the race at Kansas. And it's Kansas, so it's a 1.5-mile track, and we didn't really expect it. So he got, came out of nowhere to have a really big race. So I think because he did, did that and came out of nowhere to have a really big race, I look here. That's why I'm saying I like I, – I'm, I'm, this is a race I'm staying away from those heavy favorites this week, and I'm going to just – I'd rather just gobble up, you know, the 11-1 to Elliots, the 13-1 to Bells, and even the 14-1 to Bushers. Yeah, Busher, I would take. I'll say right now, he's my um, he's my mid pack choice. I guess if we if we want to put him in that range, two top tens. Uh, his, his two top tens at this track have both come in the last three starts. He led twelve laps in this race last year. Uh, he's been racing extremely well. Like you said, it's so close to winning several times already. Uh, probably nobody hungrier than him right now to be able to get to victory lane. And plus the fact that both of the cars of the RFK racing team have been running so well and he's been so close to winning, no reason not to go with Busher. I think he's a, a definite pick. And honestly, when when I was talking about Bell, I was going to say I almost would wait to go with Gibbs over Bell because Bell's inconsistency is the drawback. Gibbs has been racing really well pretty much every single week. He's been consistently around the top 10, had a pretty good all-star weekend, What dominated the Open and move forward in, in the all-star race itself on a race and a, a night and a track where there was absolutely no passing to be done. Uh, the only thing, obviously, just the lack of ex experience at this track and in this series, just one race before it wasn't a great result. Um, but um, honestly, I'd be willing to take the flyer on Gibbs over Bell right now. The odds are better. Um, plus, I think his trends are pointing more in the right direction. Yeah, Gibbs, uh, the only thing that's on a negative is he's raced here once last year and didn't do anything. But as you said, second at Darlington, and in his three Xfinity Series finishes here, he's finished first, second, and fifth. So he's uh, been good here. Um, yeah, uh, take what you want out of last week. Um, I think the I think the way to go at, uh, at the All-Star Race from now on and the Open is Whoever's whoever qualifies first at either race, just take those just take those drivers. <laughs> Nobody's passing them. So you can't pass anywhere at this track. <laughs> so uh, they, please don't go they, they, they can never go outside an all-star race there. Don't don't I'm sorry, I know it's an old I know everybody, you know, sentimental, but no, can't do it. They can never have another race there in this, you know, as far as a point points race, can't do a points race there. Just can't. Only, only throughout both races, 300 total laps led. Two drivers led all but one in their race. Joey Lacano was the only one. 199 out of 200 laps led. When you have an option tire, when you have a repaved track, a little bit of reprofiling to help passing, and you got absolutely none. It was, it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I know they tried with the tires. I get it. But, I mean, uh, you failed. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what you tried. I know you tried something, but it didn't work. So try better. Okay. Uh, Chastain is 16-1. to 1. Kyle Busch and Logano are 18-1. to 1. And uh, Chastain does not have a top 10 in six appearances. But he led 153 laps from the 22nd position in 2022 yet he only finished 15th that was his best result uh you have kyle bush and logano and uh, logano does have a win back in 2015 he dominated led 227 of 334 in that race and um unfortunately in two next gen races 21st and 20th so that's not good uh but um he has started inside the top five and this is important started inside the top five just once in his last 10 races. So if he qualifies well, uh, I, I think, is you know, and even if it's just like, uh, again, if it's just top five, say, maybe he's fifth. Um, I, I don't think the odds are going to drop that much. Uh, so I think you could probably still, I, I'd wait, in other words, for Joey Logano to see what he does in qualifying. Um, and for Kyle Busch, um, I, I haven't, I mean, I haven't heard anything new um, after what happened. But 
Uh, he's another one that dominated here. Led 377 of 400 in 2018. He's got nine Xfinity Series race wins at Charlotte. He's been sixth or better in eight of his last ten, including two runner-ups and a win. He was sixth last year in the next gen. He was second in 2022 in the next gen. So at 18 to 1, he's an obvious, uh, you know, kind of long shot play. It's just I don't know what's going on there with Kyle Busch right now. I don't think you have anything to worry about. Um, I think he's just remaining quiet because, you know, whatever. Um, he doesn't want to deal with it. I, I, I don't think, you know, Ricky Stenhouse has already come out and said, uh, yeah, I said that I would crash him at Charlotte, but I'm not going to. It's I'm past it. I think Bush will be over it too. Yeah, they're both going to have hard feelings, and yeah, they're probably not going to be best of friends for quite a while. Uh, but I don't think this is going to affect Bush. Um, well, wait a second. I thought you. Yeah, when did he, <laughs> when did he say he was going to crash him? I think he said it while he was still at the track. I think it was an interview that came in the heat of the moment afterward. Stenhouse said that after uh, the and then, <clears throat> after what? the fight. Oh, I said the fight. After the fight, while okay. he was still at the track, Stenhouse. well, that, that's not good. Yeah, you can't well, have both. You either get the it, sucker punch, it, or you can you can wreck him. You can't have both. Well, he and he backed off of that. Yeah. So he went on Corey LaJoy's podcast afterward and said, "I'm not I'm not going to do that. I, I'm past it." Um, and so I believe him. So I don't think Bush is necessarily going to you know carry anything into this race. He's not going to necessarily have anything to worry about. If he's trying to get past Ricky Stenhouse, is Stenhouse going to make it hard on him? Absolutely, and I would expect him to. But look at Bush's record of these three drivers. Um, why wouldn't you take him? You know, six top six finishes of sixth or better. Five of those being top fives out of the last seven races at, at Charlotte. It, that's a really good record, and that's on different teams, as different manufacturers. Uh, he knows this track, and you said his Xfinity record as well with all those wins. This is a Kyle Busch type of track. I, I would take him now. If he qualifies well, which he very well could do, he qualified fourth and fifth in the last two races, I think those odds are going to become much more steep. Certainly of these three, I'd go with Kyle Busch. I wouldn't have any holdups about his running with Ricky Stenhouse last week. All right. And then as far as the uh, rest of the field of long shots, uh, like Bubba Wallace, I think Wallace is interesting because he was fourth here last year and um, he started seventh uh, in, the, in both uh, next gen races uh, 20, last year in 2022. So that's important to note. And the fourth last year was his best finish, and you're getting 28 to 1. So I do think that that's uh, worth maybe taking a look at Bubba at that number. Uh, Bowman, eh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, he's, you know, he's had one good race. That was in 2020 when he led 164 laps. That was, I, I'm not sure, he finished 19th in that race, so he didn't even finish well. Um, no laps led in the last two races. He does have an Xfinity Series win. Um, and then as far as the rest of the long shot field, um, there really isn't anybody that stands out. I will say this though, out of the out of the really big, big, deep long shots, believe it or not, Ricky Stenhouse uh, isn't really that bad. Uh, he's he hasn't led a whole lot of laps, but he's got five top tens in his last nine races at Charlotte. That's as good as you're gonna get at Ricky Stenhouse outside of Talladega or Daytona. Uh, I'm not sure what those uh, records are, but you know that's really where he shines. He also has a couple top fives in there. And in the last two races, he's finished seventh in both races at uh, Charlotte. And in his last nine overall, what I mentioned, his average finish is 10.7. So Ricky Stenhouse. May not be a bad idea to bet like uh, Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse. Maybe one of the <laughs> two will figure out how to make it a story on Sunday night. Uh, Austin Dillon is another one uh, who's done nothing this year and has a good uh, record with six. Uh, check this out. In the Xfinity Series, he has six top fives and two wins in 12 races. And in the last four Cup Series races, three of those are top tens. He's got a win. That's when he stole the race back in 2017, leading, uh, I think, just the last couple of laps. And he was eighth at Texas this year, which is actually his only top ten. So... Those would be the drivers, the really deep long shots that I would take a look at. And then as far as the other, the only other long shot I would look at would probably be Noah Gregson. 
um, even though he's done nothing in the Cup Series, but sixth at Vegas, ninth at Kansas. So we know how he's been running. I just doubt he'd be able to win a race this you know this long of a race. You know, it's so hard for these long shots to win because that extra hundred miles that's the advantage of the better cars, the better teams. And the experience, yeah, completely agree with you. Um, and for those reasons, you know, Ben House <clears throat> better be in your fantasy roster this weekend uh, because this is going to be a place that he typically outperforms at. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure you get him on your fantasy roster. Is it likely that he's going to win? Absolutely not. Um, Bubba Wallace, though, is pretty intriguing. Uh, as you said, the fourth place finish here last year, that was his best result at this track yet. And this team has been picking up the pace, especially on the 1.5 mile ovals. They have been extremely fast and Wallace is obviously a quite talented driver. Uh, so I would not put one past Bubba Wallace and he might be the best long shot that you that we just went through. All right. Uh, as far as uh, your top picks, uh, which way would you go? Who would be like your top three picks? Uh, I would go Hamlin, um, Blaney, and Blaney. then uh, uh, Elliot. Yeah, I think Elliot. Okay. And your top long shots, one or two of them, whatever you got? That's definitely Busher for the mid pack. Um, top long shot, Gibbs. Does he count as a long shot? Is he uh, yeah, I can't really count either of them as long shots. They're both at 14 to 1. Okay, I was thinking he was deeper. So I'll take Wallace as my, my long shot. That's true long shot. One. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm going to take Elliot, Bell, and Busher as my top three. As a, again, I'm just going to go away from the favorites here. And Kyle Busch uh, is, is, is going to be like that kind of first wave of long shots. Like you said, got to take him now at 18 to 1. And I'd also agree with you on Wallace. And why not put a buck on Ricky Stenhouse? That could be funny. Okay. 